I said, hold up. What's that awesome piece? Welcome back to Brick System Brothers. My name's Nathan Masters. Today, I'm getting back to our HUTAP series with number 19. HUTAP is the acronym that I shouted at the beginning of the video. Hold up, what's that awesome piece? We take a look at an individual Lego piece instead of a set or a year or something like that and really try to focus in and see what makes certain Lego pieces stand out, rise above the rest. So we're now on number 19 of the series, getting back into it after a little break. And the piece for today is 4515, a 6x8 smooth slope. There's no studs here. It's a pretty big footprint for a piece, um, but we did look at one just a couple videos back in the series that was also pretty large, that half conical section tower. So not the biggest that we've done on the series by any means, but an interesting piece nonetheless. From the bottom, there are a lot of these tubes visible to help grip all of those studs. And there's also an interesting indent to give you a couple different ways to attach this down. Basically, the piece is a good way to get a shallow slope without um, worrying about using a lot of tiles or having any exposed studs. Uh, another common way to build up roof slopes is to use the studded slope bricks, smooth or straight. But you get to a certain point and um, you're kind of limited on the angle that you can actually build with these. So this is one of the most shallow of the studded slopes. And we'll get this lined up here with a different color and we'll be able to see um, that it is maybe cut in half or not quite double um, the slope that you can attain with one of these. The different databases around like Rebrickable and Bricklink say that this is a 10 degree slope. I don't know if that's approximate or exact. We'd have to do a little trigonometry here. I'm not going to do that today. Maybe a uh, different Lego math video that I haven't uh, put together yet. But um, that's kind of the introduction here. Let's go look at some of the years and colors. So I'm on Rebrickable for our color dispersion, but I'll be reading the dates off of Bricklink. Um, black is the most common for the slopes in this color, with 34 released, um, in 34 sets that is. Some sets will have multiple copies. And we've had a black 6x8 slope released just this year in the uh, gift with purchase that didn't go so well. What, what was the name of that probe? Uh, that Ulysses. The Ulysses VIP uh, kind of disaster was a, actually one of the few printed of these 6x8 slopes. Um, black was actually the second color released. The first color released was the old light gray color uh, back in 1983. And it was actually released as a level crossing to kind of get up from the road level over the rails in this set, 7866. Um, and this was old enough to be in the 12 volt era. So the tracks were a little bit different, but um, as we'll see in a second, this actually works just as well for the current track system uh, that started with the 9 volt era and is now the RC. So the grayscale from black to white, these top four, uh, probably the most common dispersion wise in different sets. And then you get to some other ones, your red, your old light gray, tan and blue. By the time you get down to these colors, they're only in four or five sets. There are a couple colors that have only been released in one set, which makes them uh, exclusive. And then there's an additional one that's only been in two sets. And when you use these databases, if it's in three or less, it's considered a rare piece. So dark red is considered a rare color for the slope. The rest of these are considered rare by default, uh, but also exclusive to their set. So dark tan, green, dark green, magenta, and dark pink. Uh, dark pink is an older color. Magenta is actually the most recent color that we've had for this piece, released in 2017. Uh, I want to say it was in a friend set. Let me just check over here on Bricklink. Yep. Heart Lake Hospital 41318. So in my other window, I have that pulled up. Uh, the dark green and the green, I think green was in a city set. Dark green, we can just check real quick right here on Rebrickable. 
That was in the Toy Story from 2010. And then Dark Tan was a skate park set from 2003. So just kind of those one-off colors um, where that color was applicable for the set. They went ahead and produced the piece in that color and just never got around to making it again. But 4515 is an active part. It has been released, like I mentioned, in a set this year. And I can see these grayscale colors continue to be used years in the future. As far as prints go, there are a couple here. Um, Rebrickable will show them down at the bottom. A striped awning, uh, kind of a rocky road. Another one that has kind of almost a offset brick pattern. There's not a good image here. Rusty roof print, and then this year's Ulysses Space Probe uh, with the printed plaque. I do have one of these prints that we'll take a look at in a sec. And it has this stonework pattern. This actually corresponds to the stonework on the space plate from Paradisa back in 92. So let's go look at how this print looks on the piece. Here we go. It's a nice print. That stonework. I think I'd like to use this for a driveway or um, maybe the base of a castle if you put it up on the side like that. Some foundation work with that mortar in there. The print, the actual printed part is the whitish mortar line. So this light gray color is actually the base color for the piece and then um, the detail is created by printing on that almost randomized 4515 bold number right there and the Lego logo. I'll mold it into the bottom. After the light gray color was released in 1983, it was actually eight years until they released the black one. So, so a bit of a long wait to get the second color after the first one was released, but now we have 17 different colors for this piece here in 2021. And, um, you know, there's a couple of colors that it might be useful in if LEGO decides to add it in to the lineup. So I think we could see that number go up. All right, like I was just discussing, this piece was actually released to be used as a railroad crossing. This will also work with our current track system and just takes a little bit of additional piece building in between the rails. You need to add in one plate and then you can put on a layer of tiles. That will get you up where you need to be for your height. And on the, our new, well, actually these roads just got phased out. Um, but the road base plates that were available up to about last year, uh, it actually takes at least three if you want to get all the way to the edge. The old road base plates, it only took two, um, but they widened this pavement out a little bit. So I just did one lane for the example, just to kind of observe. This is our ideas gift with purchase car. And as you can see that 10 degree slope really does make a difference when it comes to driving over railroad tracks uh, even with a six wide Lego vehicle. Some Lego vehicles with really low clearance are still going to hit because it is you know it, it's only six studs to get up to that um, three plate height or one brick height. But by Eliminating the row of studs on these, that allows us to be able to have this really smooth transition and not have to worry about an extra lip of tiling when it comes to trying to fill in something like that. So in the past, I have used this piece mostly as a roof and as um, the railroad crossing that I just demonstrated. Probably the most notable use that I ended up with a while back was actually a studs not on top technique. I just used some brackets um, and put two of these up to have a really steep gable end on my modified version of the Market Street building. So uh, I think I did have a picture of when this was on the building in my video about that that was published a little while ago. So if you want to see this, it's kind of a fuzzy picture, um, but I did talk about that in more detail there. Other than that, uh, I have been 
adding these to the collection in bulk lots. They're not very hard to find, um, but compared to your standard brick slope, it's a little more uncommon. Not terribly rare. Uh, again, those rarer colors to watch out for are the dark red, green, dark green, dark tan, um, and then maybe not as useful, but dark pink is also rare. So if you are a rare collector, keep an eye out for those colors. Otherwise, um, as black is our most common color, if you do want to build a roof out of these, I'd recommend using the black 6x8 slope. You can get maximum coverage. It's probably the cheapest to buy in quantity. It's not going to be really cheap because it is a larger piece um, and it's more uncommon than our standard slopes, but you should be able to save a little bit money if you have the color option to go with black there. All right, that is our hue tap number 19. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the next one. If you haven't seen our other hue taps before, go on back and check them out. We've looked at 18 other Lego pieces through the years, some retired, some still active, some with just a few colors, and some with almost the entire color range. So a little bit of everything back in this playlist. Um, but otherwise, stay tuned for the next video, and we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Brick System Brothers.